Want to know five principles for being successful? Stay tuned. What I'm about to tell you is something I've learned over my lifetime about how to become successful at business and life in general. That being said, I know enough to know I know very little. I've gotten to this point more by understanding how to handle the things I don't know than by actually knowing things. But the fundamental principles I have learned may help you get the life you've always wanted. You are seeing a bit of how I spend my time in Hong Kong on a business trip. 10 days, 3 countries, lots of friends, epic amounts of foods, and great business deals. This is exactly what I wanted years ago when I started trying to build my life, but how it happened isn't exactly what I had in mind when I was studying business in university. I imagined businessmen and women in boardrooms hashing out contracts and firm handshakes. In my mind, it was cold and impersonal. It's pretty spicy. So that's what I said in Hong Kong the spicy is not as spicy as Korean one. I think the kimchi is much more spicy. So that was pretty spicy. My lips feel like they're on fire. Let's go to the market. This is part of what business is about, but most of what good business is about is having long lasting relationships with everybody you work with. I really believe that thinking long term, not the next few months or even the next two or three years, but over the next decade or three is a better strategy. If you think about it over that kind of time frame, things tend to become clearer. You become less stressed about the immediate ups and downs and you focus on what is most important. That is what led me to the first principle I want to share, hyper-realism. If we can embrace the reality of our situation, we can find solutions for it. When I was growing up, I thought friends would be there forever even if I didn't put much effort into maintaining relationships. I would get hurt or feel bad when those people I thought of as friends lost touch. I wasn't being realistic. Hyperrealism means that we accept the relationships are two-way streets. We need to work at keeping our relationships with others strong. You don't just contact each other when you need something. You maintain a friendship. This is Karen. 15 years ago, we became friends in Canada at school. Endless hours of Retro Bomberman and marathon episodes of Iron Chef later, and we were best friends. If we are going to spend the next major portion of our lives working and meeting the same people, then why not become friends with the people you're going to be dealing with over the next 10 to 30 years? What's stopping us from going down the street and saying hi from time to time? What's stopping us from hopping on a bus and going to another city, or getting on an airplane and going to another country to see them? If money is an issue, then what's stopping us from contacting them on the internet and having a video chat with them? If you're watching this video, that means you have the means one way or another to maintain communication with your business partners, friends, and your family over a long period of time. This is hyperrealism. It is embracing the reality and working hard within that reality through struggles to achieve your wanted outcome. If we really want to keep a relationship with someone, we will find a way of doing so. If you haven't already done so, hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the notifications button to find out when I upload a new video. If you do so, a puppy somewhere will be smiling. A second principle that helps me daily is being grateful. I didn't get here on my own. It wasn't that I was more talented, smarter, or better than others. Any success that I've had can mostly be attributed to people around me who helped me along the way. Combine that with determination and realism, and it's a good recipe for success. After university, I was hired by a Canadian company to set up a business department at Henan Agricultural University in Zhengzhou, China. It was a fantastic experience, and after my contract ended, I wanted to go live in Hong Kong for a while since Karen and my other friends from school were there. The problem was that I had next to no money and school debts to pay back in Canada. Karen's father, through his company, got me a two-bedroom apartment in the city, which if you know Hong Kong is massive, and it was for free. This meant the world to me as I couldn't have stayed there without his help. Karen's parents became my Hong Kong parents, and a lot of other friends helped me when I was down there trying to find my way in the world. Every time I go back to Hong Kong, I try to see my Hong Kong parents, Karen, and everyone else who helped me when I was a broke university graduate barely getting by. By remembering where I come from, I feel more grateful, and it gives me a better idea of where I'm going. Waking up each day, being grateful for all the small things we have in life, the food, the friends, our experiences, makes a big difference in your eventual success. I left Hong Kong and headed to Taiwan for the fourth time in the past two months. Our company has been setting up investments at banks there as we expanded last year to include an investment fund in our corporate structure and the final investment needed my signature in person. While I was there, I went to look at different apartments to buy for future investments and to see if it makes sense to get properties in Taiwan. 
This leads me to principle three, work-life integration, not work-life balance. Similar to my Hong Kong family, I have a great family in Taiwan that has taken me in as one of their own and spending time with them is something I love to do. First dinner here was at a nice restaurant in the north of Taipei. Second dinner was at my favorite kind of place in Taipei, a night market. The next day, we took a trip a bit north of Taipei to Pingxi. This is a famous spot where you can light up balloon lanterns with your wishes written on them. They get released and fly up into the sky. It's really beautiful to see. This little village has tons of shops, places to eat, and some of the best food I've had in Taiwan. The entire time I was there, we did the tourism thing, but we were also coming up with ideas for business we're doing together and making our relationship stronger. Again, I don't have all the answers, but work-life integration has been a much better road to success for me than a split between work and life. Let's say an average person spends eight hours of sleep, 10 hours at work, including getting ready and travel time. This means 18 hours of your day is gone, leaving you only six hours to enjoy your life. But if you love what you do, if you integrate your work and your life, you can spend 18 hours out of the 24 actually living your life to the fullest. This is why exploring this beautiful waterfall at Shifen in the mountainous area around it doesn't have to be split up between work and play. It can just be your life. It took me a long time to make this mental switch, but once I did, my progression sped up and my life became extraordinary. You might have noticed that so far, there's a lot of food shown in this video. This is one of the wonderful benefits of work-life integration. You get to eat and do business at the same time. It doesn't matter if the meal is a three-star Michelin rated one or if it's street food. The bonding that happens over food feels great and leads to a lot of business. Although most of us in this video so far aren't in suits, aren't meeting in boardrooms and are friends, we are in reality working. This is work-life integration. You can be at a club living your life and still be getting business done. Some of the best business deals I've ever made have come from simply hanging out, enjoying life together and bouncing ideas off of each other. Forgetting about work once you leave the office makes success a lot harder. You can integrate your life and your work. I think it's pretty cool that Batman is dancing on stage and the business deal is happening at the same time. Work-life integration makes life just that much happier. All of this is wonderful. But without direct focus, it tends to go to waste, which is why the principle of concentrating your forces is so important. You'll see something as simple as this food and think of a business. You may want to make a restaurant, supply the restaurant with ingredients, create a tourism company, sending customers to the area, or any one of an endless number of ideas. But unless you focus on one and become an expert in that one thing, the chances of success decrease significantly. From all your ideas, choose one and go all in. When I started business in Korea, I first opened an academy. We taught English, science, math. We maxed out after one year and a half to 150 students and even took our students for homestay. But I realized that this business was not scalable and it wasn't what I wanted to do. At the same time, I opened a bar with a business partner in the Itaewon area of Seoul in a small back street near Hamilton Hotel. Within a month, all three floors were packed, but again, it wasn't a scalable business and I tend to get sleepy by midnight, so working until 4 or 5 a.m. each night wasn't the right fit for me. Around that time, I also had started Soul Guide Medical as a baby company. Here was a scalable business. I could help more people, it fit my life and dreams better. So I gave up my academy and bar and focused all my efforts on baby SGM. This dedication can come at a cost. I went from making a decent amount of income to earning about 500 USD per month, which in Korea doesn't get you very far if you have to pay rent. Although I never lost money, just surviving was difficult. Little by little, we expanded the company without taking any significant debt. Our company is debt-free, has never lost money, and continues to grow because we continue to concentrate our forces and only expand into new areas if it doesn't detract from our existing business. There are lots of business opportunities I come across each day, but if they don't fit into the vision, and will dilute our resources too much, I prefer to hold off until we have enough resources where doing a new business will not negatively impact our existing one. If we look at business over the span of 20 or 30 years instead of just two to three years, it seems that growing sustainably is a much better strategy in most cases. Become the best at whatever you do. I'll show you a great example of how concentrating your forces really works in a minute. Take responsibility in your work. Think as if you are the CEO of your life, which you are. You are your own business unit, even if you work within a company structure. If anyone knows what this man is doing, please tell me in the comments. To recap, the principle of hyperrealism shows us that accepting reality will lead us to find solutions to problems and improve our relationships. 
The principle of being grateful will open up your mind and make you happier and also improve your relationships. The principle of work-life integration will allow you to maximize your life's potential and lead to more enjoyment of what you're doing. And the principle of concentrating your forces will allow you to become an expert in one thing and improve your chances of success. Remember that great example of how concentrating your forces works? This is Big Marvel. He turned non-instrument objects into music producing ones and now has over 7 million YouTube subscribers. He didn't become an expert hockey player or an expert builder. He became an expert in what he was interested in and kept at it. The fifth principle I want to speak about is surrounding yourself with diverse thinkers which involves taking risks. It helps to understand that all our knowledge, years of education, everything we are sure we know may not be enough to be successful and that we will never be an expert of everything. If we surround ourselves with good people that add value to our lives, things get better. Flying back to Seoul, I thought about the people around me. Our office is full of a diverse mix of personalities. My friends are passionate people but we are all different. We hire people for the philosophical fit of our company. Happy patients, happy employees, and happy partners. Would this person be someone you would like to hang out with on the weekend? Do they have a passion for self-improvement? Can I see myself being friends with this person? This is the mind frame that we use when we're hiring new employees, but this doesn't mean we want them to think identically to us. Our head manager, for example, is the complete opposite of me in many respects. When I want to invest money, or have big new ideas, she immediately brings up the possible negative consequences that could happen. She's always there to make me think twice, and this is something I highly value. We have similar philosophies and goals, but our perspectives are very different. This is so valuable for a company. I believe you should go with whichever idea is better, regardless of who comes up with it. It's hard to put yourself out there. Hanging around people that think the same way as you do feels safe, but we need to take the risk and try to learn from others. You miss 100% of the chances you don't take. When I started my business life, I quickly noticed that the less I went out to meet people, the less opportunities I had. This realization forced me to put myself out there. Yes, you will get rejected sometimes. It won't feel nice. But if you get rejected 99 times out of 100, that one time may be all you need to be successful. I attended the South African Chamber of Commerce event in partnership with Cathy Pacific and Bernini. My friend Justin had organized the event and I got to meet some fantastic people. I won one of the four lucky draw prizes. I went up to receive my prize and the new ambassador of South Africa handed it to me. She also happens to be the daughter of Nelson Mandela and a princess. If I had stayed at home and thought, oh, I'm too tired, then this would never have happened. The next morning, I woke up and went to the embassy of Afghanistan to meet the ambassador who is an amazing human being and a good friend. We had a two hour meeting about setting up infrastructure in Afghanistan, life philosophy, and I learned so much. After some quick work at the office, I headed to meet Raymond, the first secretary of the South African Embassy who I met the night before. We met at the Bri Republic, a local South African hangout spot in Seoul. And through that, I got to meet his co-workers and other wonderful people doing business in Korea. The next day was the National Foundation Day of the United Arab Emirates, and this is what you're seeing now. I got to meet some good old friends and make some new ones. And through this event, our company received an invite to the Qatar National Foundation Day event coming up next week. This is how business goes. The more you put yourself out there, the more different kinds of minds you meet and the better things become. Princess Anali Mandela Dlamimi was there and I had met her a couple of days beforehand so we started talking again and I introduced my team and we all became friends. It really isn't more complicated than that. If you put yourself out there, what's the worst that could happen? Someone may not want to speak with you and that's about it. At first it seems that you would have a 50% chance of winning and a 50% chance of losing if you take the chance and go and talk to someone. I see it as the Monty Hall problem. Imagine you're on a game show with three doors and if you pick the right door and it opens there's going to be a car behind it. Behind two doors there are goats and behind one door there's a car. You choose a door but don't open it. The host, Monty Hall, picks one of the other doors which he knows has a goat behind it and opens it, showing you the goat. Monty then asks you whether you would like to switch your choice of door to the other remaining door. Assuming you have a preference for a car more than having a goat, then you have a counterintuitive 67% chance of winning the car if you switch your door. 
Staying at your door gives you only a 33% chance of winning and therefore a 67% chance of losing. This is how I see putting yourself out there. You can choose not to put yourself out there and it is like staying put at the door you choose. You don't know if you will win when it opens or not. If you go out there and see what happens, you will either open a door with a goat or a door with a car, but the chances are now 67% in your favor. You'll get to meet people who think differently from you. They'll show you new ways of perceiving the world and you will grow. This is why when my friend Julian invited me to the GQ night event at the end of my hectic 10 days, I happily said yes. Staying at home wasn't going to teach me anything new, but by going out there and meeting different kinds of people, I might gain some new insights. I met old friends, some interesting new friends, and a couple of new business deals along the way. The more chances you take, the more your life will improve. I know I'm not anyone to say that these principles are what you should have in life, and these are definitely not all of the principles you should apply to your life, but I hope they help. Thank you for watching this video, and remember to hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the notifications button so you can keep updated with all the new video releases. If you have questions or comments, write them in the comments below, and if you want to contact me directly, you can do so on Instagram at one Tony Medina. For a free consultation, consult at soulguidemedical.com and our expert staff will consult you on plastic surgery, skincare, dental, hair transplantation, laser eye surgery, and more. Visit our website at soulguidemedical.com and as always, thank you for watching.